Diablo Ballet has gone to international acclaim, presenting some of the finest contemporary and classical ballets. And this year, Diablo is celebrating its 25th season. And here to tell us more is the company's artistic director, Lauren Jonas. Welcome to Bay Area Focus. Thank you. First of all, congratulations, 25 years. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. Okay. It, yeah. Yeah. Tell me how you got started, how you started Diablo Ballet. Well, my co-founder, Ashraf Habibla, and I went to a performance at the Lesher Center for the Arts mm -hmm. in 1992, and it was Stars of the Moscow Ballet, and I had toured with a subset of that company years before, so we were interested to go. And when we went to the performance, we saw how incredibly excited mm -hmm. the audience was. There was no professional ballet company at all in Walnut Creek at the time. There was theater and opera and symphony, but no ballet. So afterwards, and I was in the midst of my professional career as a dancer, we just put our heads together and we decided to start Diablo Ballet. And it's been going strong ever since. Mm -hmm. What makes Diablo Ballet so different? There's many things that make Diablo Ballet very different. One is it's a company of just 10 dancers, where in most organizations that have such a small company, it, you perform works of one choreographer, where we have choreographers who are internationally known and also young up-and-coming choreographers as well. The dancers are not just starting their careers. They have achieved substantial status before joining Diablo Ballet, and they're from all around the world. And then most, uh, most uh, organizations don't have such a uh, in-depth outreach program such yeah. as ours. Ours is called PEAK, which is Performing Arts Education and Enrichment for Kids. Uh, we started that in 1995 with one school in Martinez, and now 23 years later, we're in the same school in Martinez, but five other classrooms around the Bay Area and Juvenile Hall. We work with at-risk teenage girls. So then you go to these different schools r recruiting or No, just... we go to these schools and we work with second to fourth graders, the same kids throughout the entire school year. So there we have a uh, presence at the school once a month. Uh, we have a curriculum that we use that is congruent with the the state arts uh, standards. Mm -hmm. And then we take that same curriculum to the uh, girls at Juvenile Hall that are incarcerated there. And we'll talk about the Juvenile Hall work because I think that's fascinating. Um, with the schools though, I think it's so important because a lot of art programs now are getting cut. Mm -hmm. And the schools that we're in are all Title I schools, so they're 60 to 100% free lunch program. And they're in very underserved sure communities. So this juvenile program, mm -hmm. you actually go to these at-risk youth and... We work in the facility itself uh, at Juvenile Hall in Martinez and we work with the girls who are ages 15 to 18 once a week for 10 months and this is through grants and uh, uh, it started with the California Arts Council's program mm -hmm. and we just started our fourth year there and I am absolutely in love with it, uh, the dancers as well and my peak associate director. It's yeah, We're teaching these girls how to express themselves through movement sure. and get them on a better path. You're doing such great work. Thank okay, you. so what is this? I know your season starts next month. Next month. But mm -hmm. you have this world premiere ballet presenting in March. Right, March is our official anniversary. Our first performance that we had was March 10th, 1994. So this is March 22nd, 19. Well, we're in 2018. 18, right. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and it's Once Upon a Time, it's a brand new story ballet, and it's a collaboration with the Contra Costa Wind Symphony who will be playing live with us at the same time. I think if you ask a kid or maybe even adults and you ask if you know they're familiar with ballet, a lot of people automatically think the Nutcracker. Mm -hmm. But now more so than ever, I think we've seen shows on TV that have a lot of dancing incorporated mm -hmm. with jazz and ballet, mm -hmm. and then also movies that we're seeing a lot. Do you think that that's had any impact on dance? Absolutely, and it's getting the ballet more mainstream because I think when people think ballet, the word ballet, oftentimes they think it's very highbrow and tutus, and, and we do some of that as well, but we also, for instance, our upcoming work that we perform every year on the holidays, a swing and holiday is swing style to a 16 piece swing orchestra. So it brings in people that get, want a little taste of what we're doing and then they absolutely fall in love with the music or the movement. And your performances are at Lesher Arts and then also... Del Valle Theater in Walnut okay, Creek. There you go. Thank you so much thank for you. coming on the show and telling us about it. And thank you for all of your work in thank the community you. as well. For more information on the world premiere of Once Upon a Time and all the wonderful performances this season, just go to DiabloBallet.org.
Coming up, the Care Merchant Walk when Bay Area Focus continues.